today the feast of Pentecost. All the feast of Pentecost, the great feast of the Holy Ghost. Today the both the sacrament of confirmation, but also the sacred receiving of the first holy communion, very sacred day, and the and the review of the epistle for this feast of Pentecost, which is taken from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. When the days of the Pentecost that were accomplished, they were all together in, in, one, in, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty wind coming, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them part in tongues as it were a fire. And it went and it, it sat upon every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with the diverse tongues, according as the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. And now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews without men out of every nation and under heaven. And when when that this was, was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded in mind, because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were all amazed and wondered, saying, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how have we heard every man our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, and Pompidia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers from Rome, Jews also and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we have heard them speak in our own tongues of the wonderful works of God. John, John chapter 14. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loved me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our abode in him. He that loveth me, not if not, keepeth not my word. And the word which you have heard is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things have I spoken to you, abiding with you. But the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring all things to your mind. Whatsoever I shall have said to you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, that I do I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You have heard that I said to you, I go away and I come unto you. If you love me, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you, before it comes to pass. And when it shall come to pass, you may believe. I will not be witness, I will not now speak many things with you. For the prince of this world cometh, and in me he hath not anything. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and the Father hath given me commandment, so do I. same as angels. There is a great tragedy, heresy. One of the effects of the heresy of Protestantism is this belief that the spiritual life is just something spirit. It's just for our minds and our hearts and for the higher things that are in the clouds. But if I stand on a cloud, I won't stand on it very long. I'll find myself falling at a great speed, and when I hit the earth, I'll splatter. We weren't made for clouds. And if I have only a spirit, I cannot praise God. If I have only a spirit, I cannot speak. My spirit speaks to you right now. My mind and my heart communicate to you. But it is only through a tongue, through a mouth, through a body, 
and by the movement of the vibration of the air, that the voice travels to you. I am not just spirit. And God did not make our religion spiritual. He made it real. And on Holy Thursday night, he said to his prophets, if you love me, and here he speaks of himself and his humanity, because God doesn't do what he says next. If you love me, I will come, and I will build my mansion inside of you. When we translate it into English, we say, I will make my abode. What's an abode? That isn't what it says in the Latin. That isn't what our Lord Jesus Christ said on Holy Thursday night. He said, I will make a mansion. Who said those words? And after he makes a mansion, something's going to happen. It's going to be a mansion, and inside of this beautiful castle, inside of this huge mansion, the Father and I and the Holy Ghost will dwell there. There is something about human beings. And Jesus Christ is a real man. We are builders. We want to make mansions. We are collectors of stuff. We might fly through the clouds, but we are not in the clouds or of the clouds. God will not make us for the clouds. Do not make us simply to be spirits. We must be builders of mansions. When St. Thomas the Apostle first set his foot in India, he was a very materialistic people. The king said to him, I have called for an architect. St. Thomas was an architect. He was a builder. I have called for an architect who will build me mansions. Build me castles, build me buildings in the Roman style. Because I have heard the Romans have very beautiful buildings. And I want Roman style buildings in India. Can you build them? Can you build me a Roman mansion here in India? Thomas said, I will build you a mansion. But you've got to give me money. And so he gave him money. And after the money was given to St. Thomas, he gave it all away to the poor. The next day, or shortly afterwards, the king called him, where is my mansion? He said, I have taken your money, and I have begun the construction of your mansion. But the mansion is in heaven. And the king wasn't very happy. So he decided to kill St. Thomas. But St. Thomas, when he first set foot in the land where, he was, where God told him, you will go to this land of India, where I've had the privilege to live for some time, India is always in my heart. When you go to this land of India, you will go there to build an in a mansion. You will go there to establish the kingdom of Christ, and it shall remain the faith there until the ending of time. And when he first arrived, what did he say? I'm here to build a mansion. God doesn't construct mansions. He doesn't need a mansion. Angels don't need mansions. But men do. We need mansions. We need houses. We desire big houses. We desire great lands. We build things. And it's something inside of our nature that God put there at the very beginning. Whoever is a real man cannot say that he's a real man if he doesn't go out and try to build something. And on this day of, Holy, of Pentecost, fire came down upon the heads of twelve apostles. The fire that made them builders. They would be called bishops. What is the word bishop in Latin? It's called pontifex. Ponds means bridge. Pontifex means the maker, a bridge maker, a bridge builder, a bishop is a construction man. A 
Lucifer is one who constructs bridges. He is an artifact. It's very difficult to construct bridges because they are built over water. It's much easier to construct regular buildings which are built over land. But he is able to build on water, whereas a normal man can't build on water. He will also build on land, for some bridges go over valleys and crevices, but he is a builder. There is no more man a man than Jesus Christ. And he is a bridge builder. He is a construction worker. What did he decide to have that the house himself be thought of when he was 30 years old? This man is a carpenter's son, and he is a carpenter. There's something about carpenter, there's something about builder, there's something about construction, there's something about mansion that is essential to us human beings. A girl loves a man that'll build her a, build her a house, that'll provide a place for her children, that will protect her in a place. On Holy Thursday night, before Lord Jesus Christ went to the Garden of Gethsemane to weep in tears of blood, before he went to the cross, he carried that wood. Remember, he had carried wood many times as a child. And why did he carry wood as a child? So that he could construct things. And he decided to carry wood on Good Friday so that he could construct things. Mansion is very important. We are mansion builders. We are meant to be mansion builders. So what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ? If you love me, the Father will love you. And because the Father loves you, and you have loved me, I will now be able to come inside of you and I will construct the mansion. You know that beautiful architecture, physical architecture, it is called Gothic, it is called Romanesque. It is the architecture of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. What about good food? That's also constructed. Monks worked on it in monasteries. What about good wine, good beer? It is a construction of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. They drank grog before the church came. There's something about Jesus Christ that he is a constructor and maker and builder of things. Now what is going to happen if Jesus Christ enters inside of me? What is supposed to happen and how shall I know that our Lord Jesus Christ is inside of me? Fire to move down upon my head. Fire is a drive. The fire to go out and build. They have the fighting CBs in the military. Combat construction crew. We are our combat construction crew. And God decided that when the temple that he wanted to be lived in, it was not the temple built by Solomon, for that temple was built in peace. And Solomon had gifts from Hiram, from India. He had gifts from other parts of the world. He had all kinds of money. And he was a great designer. And he built the most magnificent temple. In that temple, Jesus Christ would not set foot. He didn't want to set foot in that temple. It was not the mansion for him. Therefore, he prophesied that this temple would be destroyed. And it was. And it would have to be rebuilt. And it was rebuilt. It was rebuilt by a priest. It was rebuilt by Ezra. And we read in the 400 years before Jesus Christ was born, the conditions of the construction of that temple. For they had a sword in one hand, and they had a, a, a trial in the other. And they put bricks up, and they fought. For well, the devil tried to stop the construction of that second temple. He was not afraid of the first temple. Some donations came by his administration. And also we read, if you read from the ancients, that Solomon 
who constructed the, the temple that was most beautiful, he also gave himself over to the devil and out of the temple in order to please his wives, his wives who were not Jews, his wives that came from foreign land and who worshipped false gods. To please those wives, he constructed vicious and wicked temples in honor of Satan underneath the temple of Solomon. God did not wish to walk. Jesus Christ in his humanity would not walk in that temple. Therefore he had it destroyed. And he had it rebuilt by Ezra, who built it with a sword, who built it in time of battle, who constructed the holy temple in which Jesus Christ would set his foot. Our Lord Jesus Christ says he's going to construct a mansion on Holy Thursday night. The church tells us this mansion, this place of abode, is called sanctifying grace. Now what did hear about sanctifying grace? Well, that's when Jesus Christ lives inside of you. That's when your soul is alive. That's when God the Father and the Holy Ghost along with God the Son, are inside of me, and our soul is alive. What is the soul? It is the life principle of the body. That's what the soul is. How do we know the soul is there? Check with Grandma, which is 197. And she's laying on her deathbed. And you don't have any modern uh, uh, machines. Is she dead? I don't know. Take a glass, stick it over her nose, see if it fogs up. If the mirror fogs up, her body is still moving. Breath is still coming out of her body, and she's alive. The soul is there. And if you take the mirror and put it over Grandma, and the mirror doesn't fog up anymore, and there is no movement in the body, then we know by looking at the body, we know by, by putting the mirror next to the nose, there's no movement of air. The body isn't moving. Bugs are moving in. Stench is climbing. Decay is happening. She's dead. The soul is gone. We must have a soul inside of us. We are human beings. And if I have a soul inside of me, you will know because my fingers are moving, because there is breath in my body, because my body is moving, because I'm doing something. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, I am going to make my mansion inside of you. Now a mansion is not just an ordinary house. It is a most magnificent and beautiful house decorated with the finest stains. We are told by the saints that we are not supposed to be attached to material things. That we are not supposed to be too attached to them. And yet God has commanded His church that there be material things. There must be golden chalices. There must be golden vestments. There must be a beautiful church. There must be but, uh, and, and thermal, and the, and the incensor. There must be all these beautiful things that God wants us to have in order to give Him glory. Because if we love Him, we will make vestments. If we love Him, we will build churches. If we love Him, we will make sure that our mouth speaks by way of the vibration of the air to the people that hear our bodies and see our bodies that Jesus Christ is in me they will see that there's a scapular around my neck. They will see there's a rosary in my pocket. They will hear the words of God come out of my mouth. They will see my hands make statues and holy pictures. They will see crucifixes in my house. They will see saint pictures in my house. They will see a little chapel inside of my house where I pray with the wife and This is what they will see inside of the Catholic house. Because wherever there's a Catholic, there's a mansion builder. We are made to be builders of mansions, and when the mansion is constructed, the Father and the Holy Ghost, along with the Son, come and dwell inside of it. And we have two beautiful
temple sacraments today. They're for mansion building. The most wonderful of them all is called Holy Communion. It is one of the greatest privileges of the priest in his life. The priest has many privileges. And one of the greatest privileges is to take Jesus Christ and put him in a new house. To put him inside of a new house where he must dwell, a living house, and the living house that receives the body and blood of Jesus Christ is received in the Holy Sacrament of Holy Communion. When we receive our first Holy Communion, the body and the blood and soul and, Savior of, and the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ enters into our own bodies, that body must be constructed. That body must become a mansion. It must be a place where the, where the Son comes in in His flesh, and there He finds already the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and their divinity already dwelling there. That's why we say that one should never receive Holy Communion in the state of mortal sin. Because it's being received inside of the body of my house, the temple. And Lord Jesus Christ referred to his own body as a temple. Destroy this temple. And what's he going to do? In three days I will rebuild it. They have tried to destroy our church many times. There have been many kings before Joe Biden. There have been many kings before the communists throughout the world. Who have tried to destroy the kingdom of Jesus Christ on earth. They have tried to destroy our churches, the physical buildings. They have tried to take away our scapulars. They have tried to take away our rosaries. They have tried to take away our vestments. They have tried to take away our altars. They have tried to take away our customs. They have tried to take away our modest dress. They have tried to take away everything Catholic about us. They have tried and tried and tried to destroy the parts of the mansion and they have failed, and they will always fail. And when we find the mansion in great disrepair, when we find the house of the church falling down, when we find so many souls outside unprotected, what do we do? We reconstruct the temple. We reconstruct the mansion. This is what we must do as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. As members of his holy kingdom, we must reconstruct. Remember when Lazarus was in heaven and Debez was in hell. What did the scriptures say about Debez? Why is Debez in hell? He was not in hell because of his impurities. He was not in hell because of his thefts and all his various sins. He was in hell because he did not construct the kingdom of Christ. He was in hell because there was a poor man named Lazarus outside of his house, and he did not feed him. He didn't go out and build. He didn't go out and construct. He didn't go out and do the works of God and do the works of charity, spiritual and corporal. We are mansion builders, and we are supposed to be attached to mansion building. God made us creatures which desire not only God directly, but we cannot desire Him directly as human beings, because we have eyes. We can only see color. God has no color. But we can see God in things. We want to possess God, but we have to take Him in parts. And we have to go indirectly to God. We go to Him by holding on to our rosaries. We go to Him by kneeling down to the confessional and begging sorrow for our sins. We go to him by constructing houses in which he is the ruler of the house. Every family should consecrate itself to the sacred heart of Jesus. My family is consecrated to the sacred heart. And I only want my family to live inside of the sacred heart, and the sacred heart to rule inside of my home, and inside of my workplace, and so on. And then we find as you travel through life, the doors get damaged, walls must be repainted, we need to make an expansion and add on. We must be continually working on this mansion. And Lord Jesus Christ said, I will build this mansion. 
And then he said to the apostles, you go out and bring the kingdom of God to the very ends of the earth. So that one man walks into a room who is called the priest of God. And that man says, I may be the only Catholic here. I may be the only one who's baptized. The only one that believes in God. But I bring the kingdom of God with me. And what's going to happen? I'm going to spread that kingdom. I'm going to place that kingdom inside of you. Inside of every one of you if it is possible. And then we're going to build houses that give glory to the God that I rule, that I that I have a representative of. There will be places, physical places, where he reigns, which are called churches. There will be physical things which belong to him, which are the holy things that the priest will bless. And they will be carried on my person, such as rosaries and scapulars. And remember, the rosary is not only sacred when you say it. It protects by just being in your pocket. You all have your rosaries in your pocket. Don't travel without your rosaries. My dad used to tell me, a man should never walk around without two things, three things. Rosary, wallet, pocket knife. Make sure you always have a rosary, a wallet, and a pocket knife, and you're ready for battle. Always walk with the things you need. We human beings need pocket knives. Stinks now that they can't carry them to the airport. We can always carry three knives on them. And then they all went doing it with the TSA. So now I can't carry them on me all the time. But we need things. And God made us to have things. He wants us to love things. St. Anthony loved the bravery. The little book that he held. We are meant to be mansion builders. We are not angels. Our Lord Jesus Christ was quite attached to the cloak that he wore. His mother made him a most magnificent cloak without seeing. It meant a lot to him. And he wore it every day. And when he died, the soldiers were quite wise. They divided his vesture amongst them, his things amongst them. But then they saw that garment. This is the most beautiful garment. And upon this vesture, they cast lots. They didn't want to cut this garment, which had no seam. Well, the Blessed Virgin Mary made it with her own hands. And he loved that my garment. And the soldiers saw the value of it. And they didn't cut it into pieces. And we Catholics are very wise. But we take the Holy Cross, and we cut it into little pieces. And we have a relic of the true cross, and we have it on various places throughout the world. And we recognize that if a man has died a saint, we take his bones and carry them with us. The bones are in the altar. We recognize the importance of things, things that are for God, and places that are for God. On Easter Sunday morning, when the holy women went to the tomb, what did the angels say? Look at the place where they laid him. Angels look at God face to face. They don't need the place. But we need a place. We need Golgotha. We need the place where Christ is buried. We need a holy place inside of our houses. We need pictures. We need crucifixes. And, and this is one way we are more likely to God than the angels because how do we get these things? We make them. Our heart comes with a piece of wood and carves out a statue of St. Joseph. Our heart comes to a piece of wood and carves out an altar. It comes to a piece of gold and silver and makes a chalice. It makes holy things because we are builders of the mansion of Christ. Our body is supposed to be a mansion in which does not have sin and it's the only ghost is inside of us in order to receive him in Holy Communion. And then for the sacrament of confirmation, he gives us fire and strength to be adults, to be soldiers. An adult is one who is able to build his own house. He no longer needs to the help of others. And we must be able to build our own houses. But our houses must be the house of Christ. And wherever a house is constructed, it must be another place where Christ dwells. So let us be constructors and builders of the kingdom of Christ. Spreaders of the kingdom of Christ. From now until the very ending of the world. And now we certain here with the sacrament. Confirmation and the receiving of the holy oil upon the head of the chrism, once you're anointed, 
anointed, reminds you of an indelible mark. Because once you become an adult, once you become a soldier, you can never go back to a child again. We receive that strength to stand firm for our faith, carry it to the ends of the earth, to be apostles, to carry Christ into the earth. And then a little bit of slap on the cheek, a small chat, to remind us that we must be ready to suffer for Christ, to stand firm for Him. Let's live in Christ, and make sure that we are ready to die in Christ, and carry Christ to the very ends of the earth. We'll take it as you all.